All right, we're back with Brad Schoenfeld here in uh, Vegas at the NSCA conference talking about muscle hypertrophy. That's uh, putting on gains. <laughs> the, uh, with a Z. With a Z. With a Z, absolutely. I don't think our audience knows it any other way. Um, actually, before we get into training, because we definitely want to go down that track, uh, role of carbohydrate with, with protein synthesis, because oh that's one of the things that actually 10 years ago I was sitting in a room watching, that was like my first introduction to, you combine protein with a carbohydrate post-workout, and that's what, that, that's the perfect shake. And I know we already covered like, you know, you just need enough protein for, throughout the whole day, but. So again, somewhat of a murky question to answer. There's certainly no benefit post-workout for spiking muscle protein synthesis. It was often talked about the need to, uh, the role of carbohydrate, as far as its anabolic role was thought to be through its insulin properties that mm -hmm. it in yeah. increases insulin. However, what a lot of people don't know is that protein is an insulinemic um, yes. nutrient. So if you uh, take in, let's say, a whey protein immediately after training, your insulin levels are going to spike to a degree that maxes out insulin, your, your insulin response for a anti-catabolic. Insulin, by the way, is not really an anabolic hormone at physiological levels. When you get into super physio, when you talk about like bodybuilders who yep. are using Injecting it for yep. yeah, mm. um, uh, exogenously, then there's that's a different animal. But for all practical purposes, it's an anti-catabolic hormone, meaning it suppresses uh, protein breakdown. And just taking in the uh, a yeah. we're good. Yeah. Keep going. Okay. We won't do it here. Sorry about that. That just distracted yeah, yeah. the hell out of me. Uh, but taking in enough, should I start over again? No, no. Yeah, just keep going. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. taking in enough, uh, as long as you take in enough protein after the workout, taking in carbohydrate will not enhance that effect. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't mean that carbohydrate might not play an anabolic role. It actually could in the sense that it helps you. So studies show that ketogenic diets are catabolic yeah. uh, because carbohydrate actually enhances your ability to train harder. And that there is also some evidence that when your glycogen levels are depleted, uh, Dr. Galpin here can speak to this, your AMPK, uh, the, your glycogen levels are a sensor, energy sensor for AMPK. Yeah. And this, it's kind of a cluster, you know what, uh, in terms of trying to tease out these uh, these signaling responses, but it does show that it has uh, catabolic effects because AMPK antagonizes mTOR. How this plays out in, in practice is somewhat difficult to, to know, but we do know that carbohydrate fuels performance, especially in bodybuilding style training. So there, there does seem to be a role as long as your basic uh, carbohydrate needs are met, that's gonna enhance anabolism to the extent that you're gonna need. Now, gotcha. based on time, I know we, we wanna move on and talk about training prescription stuff, and so I'm just gonna throw this out to you right now, and I'm gonna throw one name at you, and I know I think you're gonna figure out where I'm going at. Uh, Sugar and Gary. <laughs> and uh, we'll have to maybe tease this uh, for another episode, but uh, the insulin fairy, does that really kill us? Oh, uh, so you're talking fat loss now. No, the, 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 no the, more than a minute. The insulin fairy is, is uh, there is no evidence that insulin uh, is the evil hormonal driver of fat accretion. And, right. and actually what uh, the studies do show, it's total energy balance and total protein intake that are gonna be the main drivers of whether you're- Body comp. Right, whether if you're gaining fat mass or losing fat mass. And and ultimately what it comes down to and the, the issue with uh, carbohydrates and the studies that have been done that show a benefit to ketogenic diets is they did not match energy intake and or protein intake. Right. So there's been a wealth now of studies showing that if you match the number of calories that are taken in between groups and the protein intake between groups, fat loss is, is almost identical. And, and some studies, actually a recent meta-analysis by Kevin Hall, I'm somewhat skeptical of the meaningfulness, but shows a, an effect, a beneficial effect to lower fat versus lower carbs. For and it was slight. It was a small, yeah. I'm not convinced that that's anything of meaning. Yeah. But it just shows that certainly it, it's not necessary to go keto to maximize fat. You're welcome to jump on Brad's Facebook page uh, and, and, and you can read much, much, much more about <laughs> Uh, I'm happy sugar. to engage. You, if anyone can come to me and show me, I'm always willing to change my opinion. You come and show me controlled studies because these were metabolic ward studies, by the yeah. way, in the Hall, in the Kevin Hall uh, meta analysis. He looked only at fully controlled feeding studies that went into metabolic wards where they gave them the food physically. It wasn't just self-report and said, yeah, 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 I ate chicken and rice when 
their uh, scarfing down Doritos. Uh, <laughs> you know, so anyway, th these yeah. are really controlled studies, and there's zero evidence I've seen that would mm. would show any benefit yeah. to a ketogenic. It doesn't mean ketogenic diet's bad, also. I don't, or at least for fat loss. It, it, I do think there is enough evidence at least now, that uh, it probably is not great for mus maximizing muscle. Well, there, there is a few studies that have, or at least one now, or, or two kind of studies that have come out showing potential uh, even gains right. between uh, non-keto non versus keto. Gotcha. Especially maintaining muscle. So, Correct. Let's take, 